in the land of the great white castle, the fifth piece of God's purple puzzle tree. When Noah died, his children cried, and his grandchildren cried, and his great-grandchildren cried. Everybody cried, but not for very long. For they couldn't help laughing at the wild story that Noah had told about the dirty purple waters which covered the land when God split the world in two. Of course, they thought it wasn't true. Well, do you? When Noah was dead, the people were bored. So they yawned and they sneered and they laughed and they snored. They lived in a land called Babylon, a land of tall white castles with beautiful golden towers. It was a land of shining temples, beautiful silver walls. They built those shining temples for all their goofy gods. Their gods had heads that looked like bulls or snakes or fish or great big ugly frogs. Then the people had a meeting. For well, they were very sassy and very, very bored. One guy said, Good heavens. And one guy said, Good Lord. It's time that we were famous. Why shouldn't people honor us if they honor Nutty Noah? He's only a goofy old goat who built a funny old boat and turned it into a zoo. Soon they all decided to build an enormous castle with a tower on the top, where gods could stop to laugh and dance and play. All the people wanted a great white shining castle, like a station out in space, very, very high. There the gods could have a picnic in front of heaven's gates, and men could come to spy on all their goofy gods who stopped to play at that castle in the sky. They started to build with big white bricks that soon became a tower. They built it higher and higher and higher and higher, trying to reach the gate of heaven. But the gate of heaven is very high, very, very, very high. Then one bright morning, God looked down to see just what was up. He squinted and peered at the earth below. Alas, he could hardly see that big white castle way down there. It looked so very tiny and so very far away. God knew quite well what those sassy men had planned. So he said to himself, I uh, must teach them all a lesson and punish the world again. I'll uh, tangle their tongues and then they'll be fun when they try to talk to each other. Some will talk in Chinese or maybe old Hindu. Some will talk like an Indian chief or a native from Timbuktu. Ha! And when they all chatter, there'll be such a clatter, they'll sound like birds in a zoo. Next morning, they started to build once again. But nobody knew what to do. For well, some talked in Chinese and some in old Hindu. When everyone talked and everyone squawked, they sounded like birds in a zoo. So the tower was never finished, and the people went away as far as they could go. They wanted a place to live and die far away from God. A long time passed, and it seemed as though God had forgotten the world. He seemed to be lost forever. I wonder whether God will ever put his puzzle back together once again. What do you think he'll do? Well, one of the families who stayed behind in the land of the big white castle had a favorite son called Abraham. And one fine day, he ran away from home, away from the mighty land of the big white shining castle. And if you ask him why, he probably will say, I ran away because God said, Now, Abraham, my boy, you have to leave this mighty land and run away from home. You have to take a long, long trip to a strange land that'll really make you flip. So Abraham left his home that day, but he didn't know where he was going. And that seems rather silly, don't you think? 
After a while, Abraham came to a hillbilly land, a really hilly hillbilly land, a land that God called Canaan. And in that land of rocks and sand, Abraham watched his cattle, for he was like a hillbilly man of long, long ago. Then God said to Abraham, I'm starting a brand new puzzle that will take a long, long time to finish. We're starting at the bottom where you fit next to me. You're to be the first big piece in my brand new purple puzzle. Well, do you agree? Abraham said, okay. And God said quietly, what this means, my boy, is that you will have some children. They'll have children too. And everyone who trusts in me because he sticks to you will make that puzzle grow and grow and grow into a mighty puzzle tree. As I set more pieces of the puzzle carefully in place, all men will come to see just how much I love you and want you all to trust in me. What a picture that will be when all the parts are set in place, like the pieces of a purple puzzle tree. And that's not the end. Boys and girls, there's an entire series of these Purple Puzzle Tree books, and I hope you'll come and find them on my playlist. This particular story in the land of the Great White Castle is actually a true story and can be found in the Bible in the book of Genesis under chapters 11 and 12. I hope you will go check that out. Thanks for watching.